This video is sponsored by Axum. In this video, I'm gonna walk through my updated video rig. Let's get to it. What up YouTube fam, we in here back with another video. And in this one, I just wanted to do an updated video on my video rig. Three or four months ago, I did a video where I was initially setting up the rig and just about everything that I had in that original video, I've either changed or modified in some way. So I thought it would be good to do an updated video and explain what I have now, what I've changed and why I made those changes. So. Without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So first things first, let's start with the camera. I'm using my Canon EOS R. Yep, 2023, still using the R. And I have that paired with the Sigma 35 F 1.4 art. And I absolutely love that combination. The footage that comes out of the EOS R is just fantastic and I absolutely love the Sigma 35. It's probably one of my most favorite lenses, if not my most favorite lens. So the pairing works really well. So I have the small rig wooden handles with the contoured grip and they really were a needed thing. Now, originally in the first iteration, and this is like the third iteration of this rig, I think it's pretty good now. In the first iteration, I had the full size uh, small rig side handle that felt really good. I love that side handle. It's actually on another rig that I have. But what I found once I had this all together was that my fingers were getting really tired holding the rig with those handles. Because even though this is a very well balanced rig, it is still, there's a lot of weight towards the front so it is still to some degree front heavy so in holding it really the only thing that is holding it is you know a lot of that weight is on your fingers and i really just found that with the original handles that i had on there my hands were getting tired really quick and i'm talking like within a couple of minutes just my fingers were very fatigued so i thought i would try out the small rig that has the contoured grip not thinking that it would make that big of a difference, but I figured it would have to be more comfortable to hold. And I was pleasantly surprised that it actually made quite a big difference. Um, I'm able to hold this rig for a, a very long time and my fingers never get tired. So it really makes a big difference. Now, a part of that may be that these are thicker. They're slightly thicker. Um, but I think a big part of that is just with the contour, it just fits in the hand better. So it just feels really good. So if you're on the fence about getting the contoured handle, I would definitely recommend you get it. It feels good and it really does make a difference in your hand when you're holding a rig, especially if you have a heavier rig like this one. Now, also while I'm on the topic of the side handles, I want to talk about the fact that I have my side handles offset. So typically when people have their rigs, they have their side handles in the same spot. So wherever it is, they're in the, on the same plane where I have mine, I have my left handle that's more front frontward facing towards the lens. And my right handle is more rear facing towards my body. And there are two main reasons for that. So number one, it really helps to balance the rig. Now I mentioned that this is a fairly balanced rig. However, um, when you have the handles in the same spot, when you have your lens and everything here, and then you have your camera body, and if you have a V-mount battery back here, having it where they're equal, it kind of has like a teeter-totter effect because you have weight on the front, weight on the re rear, and then your handles are kind of in the middle. So you kind of get the rig wants to go either way. So in having it offset like this, it really balances that load. So I have the handle on the left that's more towards the front, so it's handling the front load. And then I have the one on the right that's more to the rear, so it's handling, handling the back load. So it just feels more balanced that way. So, you know, I'm, I'm barely even holding it and, you know, it, it really doesn't want to necessarily go either way. So it just feels really good from a balance perspective for me. 
The second reason that I did that is that it allows me to be able to keep my right arm tucked. I like to have the elbow right on my side so I can really tuck it in there. So in that way, when I'm filming, I just have a lot of stability and control over what I'm doing. So that's why I have my handles in that particular position. So moving on to the microphone, this is a Boya microphone. And so when I was looking for mics, I wanted something that was cost effective. I know there a lot of people use like the Rode mics or the Sennheisers. I didn't want to spend that kind of money because I've spent way too much money with small rigs. So I was really looking for something that was price conscious. And, you know, I just happened to stumble across the Boya and it got some good reviews. And I will definitely have to say I was pleasantly surprised at how well this microphone performs. So it's a $50 microphone and the audio that comes out of it is perfect for what I need. It sounds great. It picks up voices really well, but it doesn't pick up a lot of the ambient noise. And I was thinking that this windscreen on it wasn't going to be that good because typically people use the bigger dead cats, but it, it works really well. So if you know anything about Vegas, it can get really windy here. And during WPPI, I used this thing for a week straight, just filming a ton. And it was windy most of the days. And this windscreen did amazing. Um, the mic did amazing. The, the audio that I was able to get was just fantastic so this really is a good option for a microphone a uh, good budget option for a microphone so of course if you're going to have a rig and you're going to have a cage you kind of need to have a top handle if you didn't have anything else on your rig you need a top handle number one it just makes it easy to just carry the rig you know when you got to transport it it's just it's a lot easier to do when you have a top handle um, but it also allows for easier filming when you're down low. So you're able to, you know, put this rig down low and record and film. Whereas if you had to use the side handles, first of all, it wouldn't be comfortable to get down that low. And, you know, if you were trying to like hold it down like that, it's just not as comfortable and you're not going to get as steady of footage. So having that top handle really allows you to be able to, um, carry it easily and get your low angles very easily as well. Moving on from there, I have the monitor set up with the small rig monitor mount. Now, if you remember from that first video, I was originally using the L bracket clamp that came with this monitor. And this is the Field World 568 monitor, I believe. It's their, their budget monitor, it's like 125 bucks. So with it, there's an L bracket that comes with it. And so I was originally using that because I didn't really want to spend the money to buy the small rig monitor mount because it's 50 bucks. And I thought, you know, the, the, the mount that came with the monitor would be more than sufficient. But in using it, what I quickly discovered was that because that mount has the monitor so much higher than the lens, it kind of created an imbalance in a vision equilibrium, if that makes any sense. And so what I'm what I mean by that is that when you're holding the rig, you have your lens right here. So obviously this is where your feed is coming from. So when you have your lens right here, but you have like your monitor right here. So you're having to look up this way, but you're filming right here. It just doesn't feel as natural and balanced. And so I quickly realized that I wanted to have the monitor down lower so that it was more in line with the lens itself. So then that way, when I'm looking at this monitor, here's where this stuff is and I'm looking this way. So peripheral wise, what I'm seeing, I can see out of my peripheral as well. So it just all feels very natural to me. From there, probably the biggest change that I made from the first iteration to this one is I added a rail system. So I essentially did that for two main reasons. Number one, there's obviously no V mount battery on this at the moment, but I realized that that probably was going to be something that I was going to tap into eventually because these monitors chew through batteries fast, uh, especially this field world monitor when I'm using my Canon batteries. <laughs> 
it, it, it goes through batteries fast. And the Ninja, although the Ninja does fairly well, it goes through batteries fast as well. And the problem with the Canon cameras, and I don't know if other brands are like this as well, but the problem with the Canon cameras, if the monitor dies, the recording stops. So that's just kind of a bit of an inconvenience. So I figured at some point here in the near future, I'll probably have to get a V mount. And then I also wanted to have a uh, lens support. And that's just me being me. And in most cases, you probably don't need one. But typically when I'm doing photography and I'm holding the camera, I always hold the lens with my left hand just to support it. And that support really isn't for the camera itself. I'm not concerned about that mount. It really is more so for the lens, especially with this Sigma 35. It's well known for having the uh, screws at the end of the barrel coming loose and then it wobbles and then you have to kind of take it apart and, and tighten those screws. So I really wanted to have something to support the lens because obviously when I'm holding it this way, there's just nothing out there. And you know, if I'm using a, a heavier lens, like a 7200 or something like that, that's just a lot of weight hanging at the end of the camera. So I just wanted to have that support. So in order to do that, I knew I was gonna need a rail system. So I picked up the small rig base plate, and then I have these small rig eight inch uh, rods. And these are just the aluminum ones, not the carbon fiber ones, because I really wasn't concerned about weight. This rig is obviously not light already, so wasn't concerned about that. And then I just have this small rig um, lens support here. So then up front here, I have the small rig. And as you can see, everything is small rig. Um, and I bought it all. They didn't send me any of this. It's all, I'll, I bought it all with my own money. So I have their mini mat box. Now I went with the mini over the regular size one because essentially I didn't want to have like the big one. I wanted to try to keep this rig compact. I know it maybe doesn't seem overly compact, but I wanted to keep it as compact as I could. So I went with the mini and that was, you know, fine for what I needed. So I picked up a mini mat box, a mat box in general for, for two main reasons. One, the functional reason is that it's it functions as a lens hood so it helps to block side light coming in or top light coming in and hitting your lens and causing lens flare so obviously very good use for that but the second reason was more cosmetic i just like the way matte boxes look i feel like when you have this rig this is kind of like the finishing touch and without a matte box it it just it just always seems like something is missing now what i really like about the small rig mini mat box is that it has filter threads inside of the mat box so it basically attaches to your lens using one of the adapters that comes with the mat box so it screws on to the front of your lens but then you're also able to screw in filters on the inside of it which is really really convenient now this also allows for four by five um filters but i don't have any of those all of my filters are screw in so it was very important to have a matte box where i would still be able to use my screw in filters so that works out really well also so that is the rig so at wppi 2023 i predominantly did only videography i did one photo shoot the entire week and everything else was videography and i just backed up all the footage and I had a little bit over 20 hours of total footage. So I've been able to use this in my hand for 20 plus hours just in that one week's time. And this thing was a dream to use. The footage that came out of this was great. Using the rig was fantastic. It was very stable. As I had mentioned earlier in the video, of course, you know, you're not gonna necessarily be able to get as smooth the footage as using the gimbal. But if you look at this footage here, I recorded this and you know hit it with a little light warp stabilizer and it looks really good for being handheld. So if you use good technique, you really can get some nice smooth footage using a handheld rig, but yet it still kind of has that movement so it's not so clinical like using a gimbal. And that's really the main reason why I don't love gimbals is because it, it does feel so smooth that it just doesn't kind of has like a surreal feel, feeling to it. And I don't particularly like that. So again, personal preference, whatever you like is what you like. Now moving on to the sponsor of this video, Axoon. Now, Axoon is a company that caters to videographers. They were founded in 2014 
and they're probably mostly known for their wireless transmission systems. So you can have a transmitter on the camera plugs into the HDMI and then it transmits that feed to the receiver that will be connected to a different monitor. And so basically you can monitor the, the feed from the camera um, elsewhere. And then they also have something where you can connect a device to your camera via HDMI and then it connects to your phone. So then your phone can act as the monitor. So you, you may have seen that on YouTube a lot because a lot of people uh, have that and have videos of that on YouTube. So that's kind of what they were known for. But what they also have and what they sent me to test out, if I can find the zipper to open it here, is a follow focus. Now, you may notice that I'm taking it out of the case and it's not on my rig, and I'll touch on that in a moment. But this is their follow focus. Now, first of all, this thing is built very well. When I first took this out, this is the motor. This is the actual um, wheel to do your focusing. And the first thing I noticed was how well built this is. This kind of feels like some sort of metal, uh, maybe like an aluminum or something like that. This is a little bit more plastic, but it still feels really good. And so when it comes to follow focus, let's first talk about when you would want to have follow focus. So if you have a cine lens or if you just have a manual focused lens, you really need to have a follow focus. If you're using your rig and you have something like this, trying to get your hand in here to do focus would just be very cumbersome and not practical. Of course it can be done, but it's not gonna be very comfortable. So that's where having a, a follow focus, you, you almost have to have it. So that way you, it's just easier for you to focus that lens. If you look at any cinema rig setup that has a cine lens, you're almost guaranteed to see some sort of follow focus. Um, it's just a necessary piece. The second instance where you would want to have a follow focus is if you have a dedicated focus puller. Now this is going to get more into like if you're doing like productions and that sort of thing. But if you have a dedicated focus puller, so that's somebody that is off to the side that is just in control of your focus. So you have someone manning the camera and it's their job to do the composition and put the camera where it needs to be. Then you have your focus puller that's in charge of doing the focus. You need something like this as well, because obviously if your focus puller is over here, they're not going to be able to be over here to change the focus using the lens. So they need something like this as well. Now, neither one of those applies to me. So what do I use this for? Well, I use the focus puller anytime I'm filming something that is more slow paced where I have either like a designated shot list or I'm filming something where there's not a lot of camera movement or there's not a lot of movement in the scene itself. This allows me to get that focus right where I need it to be. So, you know, if I'm filming something, for example, uh, where there's no people. So let's say I'm just filming a scene, whether it's a room or I'm on location somewhere and I'm filming something as good as the autofocus is on these cameras, especially when it comes to detecting people, when there's not a person in the scene, the camera doesn't know what you want it to focus on. So it's typically going to either focus on what's closest to the lens, whatever's the brightest or whatever's the biggest. And so you're leaving it up to the camera. And a lot of times it doesn't necessarily pick what you want it to focus on. So being able to essentially go into a manual focus mode and uh, use the, a focus pull to focus where you want it to be, it really is advantageous. Now you could say, well, you could just use your screen and just tap where you want it to focus. And that is very true. But the problem with that is that that focus is very quick. So if we're going from the front to the back 
and I tap, it's gonna focus on this really fast and it's gonna be jarring. So in videography, at least from you know what I feel and what I've seen, you really want that focus pull to be a little bit slower and more smooth so that it doesn't just go from like here to here just like that and really mess up the vibe of what you're doing. So being able to have uh, a focus puller, you can just do that focus as slow or as fast as you want. And you know, if I'm filming something with a person, you know, let's say if I just have one person in the scene, um, this just allows me to have control over exactly where I want that focus to be because maybe I don't want the focus to be on the face. Maybe I want to focus somewhere on the body or I want to focus on something slightly in front of the subject. Again, the camera is not going to know that. So being able to just control that focus, there's a lot of value there. Now, where I don't use a follow focus and the reason why it's not currently on my rig is any time where I'm doing a run and gun type situation. And pretty much everything that I did at WPPI was run and gun. So if I'm doing a lot of moving around, it's just gonna be 10 times easier to just let my camera focus, especially when there's a lot of people in the scene. I've tried to use this in a run and gun situation when they first sent it to me, I tried to use it and it just, it just did not work for me. And I think even if I got really, really good at using a focus puller, I just don't think run and gun situations are really the best fit for a focus pull. Um, the cameras are so good at detecting faces that it's easier to just do that, especially when you know, you're know you just moving the camera a lot. Every time you're moving the camera, if you're having to sit here and do this as well, it's just gonna be a lot of work. So not great for run and gun situations, but in any of the other situations that I mentioned, this is really good. Now, I really like this particular follow focus. This is, again, this is the motor. And so basically when I'm using it, I will attach it to the handle here. And then of course, this is gonna go on the rail and hit the lens that way. So then what this allows me to do is when I'm holding it and I have it on there, I can just do that focus just like that right there. And so basically the way that it connects, there's a battery that goes in this right here. It's just a, a smaller Sony battery, very easy to get and uh, very affordable. So basically you have that and then using a USB-C cable that plugs into this, the USB cable then plugs into this as well. So then this powers this unit right here. So you could also use, uh, if you had a V mount, you can use D-tap as well, which is another reason why I do think I'm gonna go with a V mount because as I start adding more accessories that require batteries, it's just gonna get cumbersome having to change out a bunch of batteries all the time. So again, the build quality on this is fantastic. I love it. And if you're doing videography, I feel like a follow focus is something to have in your kit. It's not going to be something that you use all the time, but it's something good to have in your kit. And right now through, I believe April 20th, Axoon is having their spring sale and everything is up to 15% off. So if you're looking to either get a follow focus or if you're looking to try one of their wireless transmission systems now through april 20th would be a great time to try it out because you can save a little bit of money so i will have the link in the description below it is not an affiliate link it's just a link to their website with the 15 percent off so that's the rig thank you to Axiom for sponsoring this video thank you for watching this video till the next one take care Bye.